On the 2018 summer solstice, I visited Chaco Canyon, New Mexico, a vast and enigmatic complex of buildings, roads, and ceremonial features built by the ancestral Puebloans some 1400 years ago. My trip here was inspired by an interest in ancient sky worship and sacred architecture, which in turn was sparked by an earlier expedition to Peru. Like the Incas and their Andean ancestors, the ancient peoples of the American Southwest seem to have been avid observers of the cosmos. They likely studied celestial phenomena such as solstices, equinoxes, lunar cycles, and constellations as tools for orienting themselves in time and space. But for these societies, the sky's greater significance may have been symbolic. They may have interpreted the features and patterns of the cosmos as reflections of their own consciousness, as clues to their earthly existence and purpose, and as metaphors for their spiritual journeys. Chaco Canyon, like many ancient sites around the world, may have been constructed around the theme of sacred alignment. That is, the achievement of correspondence between earthly, cosmic, and spiritual realms. Indeed, the location, layout, and architectural styles, as well as geocosmic orientations found at Chaco Canyon, suggest that this was not merely a residential community or trade center, but a sacred place for connecting with a higher consciousness. My name is Andrew Caton. I'm an explorer, traveler, and storyteller, and this is my journey to Chaco Canyon. The trip began with a familiar drive through western Colorado, past the green and lush slopes of the San Juan Mountains. But as I crossed into New Mexico and entered the land of the Chacoans, the scenery quickly changed to high desert. We're getting pretty close. I can't believe how stark the contrast is in the scenery. Once you go south of Durango, you get out of the mountains and it just turns into this, it's just like high desert with a lot of mesas and buttes, really harsh, really harsh landscape. Makes you wonder how anybody lived out here. Driving south on Highway 550, it becomes immediately apparent that the petroleum industry is very active in this region. I saw numerous oil and gas trucks along with drilling facilities. In recent years, these undertakings have been criticized by conservationists as a threat not only to the environment, but to historical places like Chaco Canyon as well. According to articles I'd read, the noise of drilling can actually be heard at the ruins. As both a geologist and a historian, I was interested to see for myself just how closely modern civilization has impacted the treasures of our past. Turning off the highway, visitors to Chaco begin a 20-mile drive through an increasingly barren and remote landscape. There are very few signs of civilization along this route, and I began asking myself questions that would be repeated over the next couple days. Why did ancient peoples come to such an arid and desolate place? Where did they get the timber and other materials to construct their buildings? How did they locate food and water? Basically, how did they survive here? Yeah, it's just, there's just nothing out here. It's just miles and miles of sand, scrub, it's a few little gnarly trees distant mountains, but not much. According to archaeologists, Chaco Canyon was constructed between 850 and 1250 AD by the ancestral Puebloans, sometimes called the Anasazi. These people inhabited a vast swath of today's Four Corners region, situated generally between the Colorado and Rio Grande rivers. They built a complex network of roads that connected population centers like Mesa Verde and Taos Pueblo. However, despite the ruins and artifacts they left behind, which seem to indicate advanced knowledge of the skies, as well as oral myths passed down to their modern day descendants, very little is known about this ancient society. No one is really sure why they came to such a desolate place. So if you come to Chaco, just be advised, it's not too bad, the road's not too bad, but you might want to bring four wheel drive. You can imagine, after a rain, this is going to be a messy road. There's gravel and it looks like it's fairly well maintained, but the stretches of it are, are just dirt. Oh man, this is awesome. We're starting to come into the canyon, it looks like. I wonder if that's Fajada Butte, where the Sun Dagger is located. Campground where I'll be 
is staying. Gaio Campground. It's only about two miles from the park entrance. There is, I'm pretty sure that's Fajada Butte there. I stopped by the visitor center to purchase my park and campsite passes. Chaco Canyon is a national historic park, so it includes lots of fantastic exhibits and a large souvenir shop. There's heaps of information about the daily lives, artwork, and architecture of the ancestral Puebloans, including these models of Chaco's great houses. But I had researched this place before my visit, and after six hours in the car, I was itching to get out and do some exploring on foot. On my way outside, this sign caught my attention. It highlights Chaco's development in the context of other world civilizations. Missing from this list is the Incas of Peru. After all, they were just one of many tribes set on the Cusco Valley at the time that Chaco was already in decline. Unfortunately, my visitor center layover yielded some disappointing news as well. All right, so I already ran into a little bit of a planning snafu. One of the reasons I came to um, Chaco Canyon was with the, the hope of shooting a time lapse at Casa Rinconada, which is this great round kiva that I'm going to visit in a little bit. But on the summer solstice sunrise, there's a beam of light that goes through a window and illuminates a niche on the far wall. And it's just like one of these, well, it happens once a year, but I can't access it tomorrow morning. So I'm actually here on the summer solstice. I was going to shoot my time lapse on the 22nd, which is the next day, but you know, still pretty close. Um, but I can't get in there to do it. So something to know if you come and visit Chaco Canyon and you want to see the solstice on, at Casa Rinconada um, or be there at daybreak, check the calendar. Make sure that you that there's actually like a, a scheduled opportunity to do that. Otherwise, you can't get in until seven, and the sun's already up. I think the sun rises here at about 5:30. So, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to cross that one off my list. But what are you going to do? Well, let's uh, go check out the next place. We're going to go look at Una Vida. <laughs> The sign at its trailhead states that Una Vida is one of the oldest and largest great houses or monumental buildings found at Chaco Canyon. It was constructed about the same time as Pueblo Bonito, the park's most famous ruins. Una Vida contains some 100 rooms and kivas, along with a great kiva in the center plaza. Kivas are subterranean rooms found at many ancient sites across the American Southwest. They may have served a number of different purposes, including spiritual ceremonies. Descendants of the ancestral Puebloans, such as the Hopi, still use kivas today. Okay, this is on the trail to Una Vida. You can see there's some small structures. Kind of walked up a hill. Here's the one we just passed. Here's three major points to know about Una Vida. One, it's walking distance from the visitor's center. Two, it includes a splendid wall of petroglyphs. And three, these ancient rock carvings are located at the end of a fairly steep and uneven trail that may be difficult for some hikers to access. It's a little bit of a hike up to the Una Vida petroglyphs. We're at about 6,000 feet elevation, so not too much different from what I'm used to. In Colorado, you can hear them a little bit winded, but I'll say it is hot here. You know, those quadrupeds with the, looks like antennae or horns maybe, um, maybe some goats, almost looks like there's some antlers. Um, 
you've got some human figures with the you know the distinctive spiral design which is you know means different things to different people but certainly uh, reminds me of the Milky Way you know in the solar system these these spirals um, that we see at all different scales in our universe there's a handprint very cool all right so we just left the visitor center we're gonna head over and find our camp spot at the Gaio campground go ahead and pitch our tent it's a good time to do it because it's hotter and blazes right now and I want to get out once the Sun starts to set and take some pictures that's when the light will be really good right now it's just really harsh um, but we're going about a mile I guess about a mile down the road and we'll get things set up and then get back out and do some more exploring cool campsite I think it's the only one near Chaco Canyon if you don't stay here you have to basically get a hotel like 60 miles away but there's a really nice sandstone cliff you can see there's a little uh, dwelling over there we'll check out in a little bit um, but should have really great view of the stars tonight perfectly clear sky I can already see the moon off to the north and um, uh, it's just awesome so happy to be here as I set up my tent at Gallo Campground, I reviewed what I knew about sacred correspondence and geocosmic alignments. I knew from my previous research and trip to Peru that countless archaeological sites around the world, and of all different time periods, appear to have been constructed in accordance with celestial and earthly landscapes. Many of these ancient locations have walls, doorways, windows, and roads that align with the cardinal directions, solstice and equinox sunrises and sunsets, lunar cycles, and constellations, or with views of waterfalls, rivers, or mountains. Some seem to incorporate sacred geometry, such as the Pythagorean triangle or the golden rectangle into their designs. Others contain markers such as pillars, wall niches, or rock carvings that indicate certain days of the year using the sun's shadow. Numerous sites have petroglyphs or pictographs that illustrate the sun, moon, comets, or celestial themes such as spirals. Many include spiritual walkways or vistas as if to kinesthetically connect a visitor's psyche with the earth and sky. Sometimes sites are oriented with other sites that may be situated hundreds of miles away, just as Chaco Canyon shares a north-south axis with Puebloan ruins at Aztec, New Mexico and Paquime, Mexico. If you've watched some of my other videos, you already know that the concept of sacred correspondence is summarized by the phrase as above, so below. Though specifically associated with Hermes Trismegistus of ancient Egyptian or Greek origin, the idea behind this phrase was echoed in societies all around the world. In a nutshell, as above, so below suggests that certain patterns or arrangements are observable at all scales of existence, from galactic to microscopic, and from outer or physical to inner or spiritual. I personally believe that understanding the framework of as above, so below is absolutely essential for interpreting the architecture created by societies of the past, whose spiritual belief systems seem to have been rooted in elements of astrology, shamanism, alchemy, and animism. In fact, sacred correspondence between earth and sky may have been the very reason that ancestral Puebloans came to Chaco Canyon. Therefore, I would also make exploring these connections the goal of my visit. With the sun high in the sky and temperature approaching 100, I mapped out a rough itinerary for my trip before setting out again. I had already been to the visitor center and Una Vida. Next, I planned to enter the park and drive to the sites of Hungo Pabi and Chetro Kettle. 
You can check out those investigations in part two of this video series. Later that evening, I would also make my way to Pueblo Bonito, the largest and most impressive of Chaco's ruins. Viewed during the solstice sunset, Pueblo Bonito reveals numerous spectacular geocosmic alignments. That evening was a highlight of my trip to Chaco, and I hope you'll join me in part three to explore this amazingly spiritual place. The next day, I plan to get up early to watch the sunrise, and then survey the famous sun dagger of Fajada Butte, followed by visits to Pueblo del Arroyo, Quinclezo, Pueblo Alto, and finally, the great Kiva of Casa Rinconada. I hope to see you there in later videos. Finally, with my camp established, I took a few minutes to explore the nearby ruins, which offered a welcome bit of shade from the heat. Then, feeling refreshed, rehydrated, and eager to see more, I set off for the park entrance. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking or sharing it. For similar videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel or visit me on Facebook. I hope you'll stay tuned and join me on the next adventure.